ES Audio. Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, one of the world's most invasive species spotted in Europe. Now, let's get into it. NASA has revealed that a distant exoplanet could have signs of life. The space agency says that carbon dioxide and methane have been detected in the atmosphere of exoplanet K2-18b, which is more than eight times the size of Earth. They also hinted at an even more remarkable possibility in the potential finding of a molecule called the methyl sulfide, which on Earth is only produced by life. The groundbreaking discovery means K2-18b may belong to a unique class of exoplanets known as Hycium planets, which possess hydrogen-rich atmospheres and potentially water-covered surfaces, making them candidates for life. Now, a study has revealed that one of the world's most invasive species has officially been spotted in Europe for the first time, the red fire ant. Native to South America, the species can spread alarmingly quickly, and scientists from the Institute of Evolutionary Biology in Spain are warning they could spread all over the continent after being detected in Italy. Previous research has described how humans have helped the ant species, named after its most infamous characteristic, its painful stings, spread via the maritime trade industry and by shipping plant products. Such activities have led to the species establishing itself in Australia, China, the Caribbean, Mexico and throughout the US in less than a century. However, Europe has evaded them for longer than expected, until now. A university student has designed a prototype device which can detect concussions in under 10 seconds on the rugby field. Once uh, the subject's ID has been confirmed, you hold the device up to the subject's eyes and you press the action button. The process then begins. It takes 10 seconds long. The white LEDs provoke a pupil response and the infrared cameras begin to record the eye's response. That's Joel Poulter, who designed the handheld device to provide objective, rapid assessments of players which can help prioritise player safety. So once the device is finished doing the test, it will give you a result, a pass if it's a normal pupil response and a fail if it's an abnormal pupil response compared to the player's baseline. Joel designed contact after his own experiences of concussion during 15 years of playing rugby. I want contact to detect concussions rapidly and accurately, preventing players from returning to play prematurely and also reduce the impact of long-term brain injuries. Next. The FBI is helping to investigate after MGM Resorts International was hit by a cybersecurity issue impacting its hotels and casinos in the US, including in Las Vegas. Reports say the company websites were down and some guests complained of problems with slot machines as well as hotel room access. In their latest statement posted on social media, the company said their investigation into what had happened was ongoing, but their resorts, including dining, entertainment and gaming, were operational. Professor Sir Ian Woolmer, the man who led the team which cloned Dolly the Sheep, has died at the age of 79. He was famously part of a team at the Roslyn Institute at the University of Edinburgh, who successfully cloned the sheep in 1996. Sir Ian previously said he hoped cloning would mean no species became extinct. But Dolly's creation also paved the way for potential stem cell treatments to combat degenerative diseases. He retired from the University of Edinburgh in 2012 and revealed a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease six years later. Experts are warning of e-waste issues over the iPhone charging port switch. Apple is expected to unveil the latest iPhone 15 range later today, with the lineup widely reported to feature a USB-C port in place of Apple's Lightning port for the first time. The change has been sparked by new European Union rules, which mandate that small and medium-sized electronic devices must have a universal connector by the end of 2024 to cut costs and make life easier for consumers. Last year, Apple confirmed it would comply with the new rules, but suggested it was not entirely happy with the decision, raising e-waste and innovation concerns. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, blood is thicker than water for jackdaws too, and Spotify says no, the 30-second trick can't get you rich. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. The old saying goes that blood is thicker than water. Well, it looks like that's also the case for jackdaws. Scientists have found that the small crows switch friends to gain food, but stick with family even at the risk of going hungry. 
The study looked at jackdaw colonies in West Cornwall and presented them with a task in which access to tasty mealworms depended on which individuals visited together. Though the birds soon switched friends to get the best rewards, they stuck with their offspring, sibling and mating partners, no matter what the outcome. Scientists say a COPD cure could come from transplanting a patient's own lung cells. The experimental treatment would see a patient's own cells transplanted into damaged parts of their lung. Just 20 patients took part in the preliminary trial, but the findings were shown to delegates at the European Respiratory Society's International Congress in Milan. Patients reported being able to breathe better, walk further, and said they had a better quality of life after the treatment. And finally... Sorry if you were planning on using the rumoured Spotify 30-second trick to get rich quick. The head of Spotify has denied claims that users can repeatedly listen to their own uploaded 30-second track to make money. Finance analysts at JP Morgan had said that Spotify subscribers could make up to the equivalent of £960 a month by listening to their own song on repeat 24 hours a day, suggesting Spotify's royalty payment structure could be manipulated. But Daniel Ek, the streaming giant CEO, has reassured users and artists that this is not how the platform's royalties work. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader podcast from the Evening Standard. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.